In this video, let's talk about another battery materials company here in Australia called Toga. And I'm going to compare them directly with Nivonix. Full disclosure, I don't own either stocks and this video is made with a lot of help from Jordan from The Limiting Factor. In his video on Toga, he'll be answering three main questions from an engineering perspective and that's, is the product viable? Is it scalable? And can they turn a profit? In my video, I'll be focusing on a side-by-side -side comparison between Tolga and Novonix and see who is poised to be the next established battery materials supplier that's outside of Asia. Now, this video is not financial advice at all. If you need help with investing, make sure you go see a proper professional and not just a shaved head, random Asian dude on the internet. And if you want to support me, just gently smash that like button right there and that's more than enough. So without further ado, let's go. For the purpose of this video, I'll be zooming in on the anno materials market because that's the area that both Novonix and Tolga is actively participating in. And this video is mainly broken into two parts. I'm going to give an overview of both companies first, how they make money and also some of the key milestones. And then we're gonna jump into a side-by-side -side comparison. So let's start off with Novonix. They are an advanced battery materials company that's listed here in Australia, but majority of their operations are in the US and Canada. Now the focal point of the Novonix story has been the co-founder, Dr. Chris Burns, and his ties with Tesla, as well as Tesla's research partner, Jeff Dorn. I made a separate video detailing Novonix's relationship with Tesla. So for anyone who's interested, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Now, as of recording this video, Novonix is trading at approximately $1.16 with a market capitalization of approximately $400 million. And majority of their revenue is mostly generated via battery testing services or supplying battery materials to top tier battery manufacturers. And some of the key milestones that's really worthwhile noting is Novonix has signed a initial supply agreement with Samsung SDI of approximately 500 tons of synthetic graphite anode material and a non-binding memorandum of understanding with Sanyol. Now, both of these companies are actually the top five battery makers in the world. And Sanyol is a subsidiary of Panasonic, which makes a bulk of Tesla's battery cells. Now, Tolga is an anode battery materials company here in Australia with majority of their operations in Europe. And according to Benchmark Minerals, Tolga is currently the only announced anode production plan in Europe over the next 10 years. They are backed by one of Norway's richest businesswomen and her family was once known for shipping, oil services and sardine canning. As of recording this video, Tolga is trading at 52 cents with a market capitalization of approximately $120 million. Now some of the key milestones that's really worthwhile noting is Tolga and Mitsui's agreement to joint develop the Vatangi Anno project in northern Sweden. And as part of this agreement, Mitsui is potentially looking at taking a strategic stake in the project and providing financing for pre-development and production stages of the project. Now, another milestone that's really worthwhile noting is that their battery anode agreement with Farasis Energy. Farasis Energy is a publicly traded battery cell manufacturer in China and Mercedes-Benz has a 3% equity stake in that company and a strategic partnership with Farasis. Now, the last key milestone that's really worthwhile noting is the Vatangi project that's wholly owned by Tolga is a national interest to the Swedish government. Let me paint the backdrop for you before we get into the actual comparison. The global EV battery demand is forecasted to grow 10x by 2030, which means that it's very likely that the manufacturers will need more than 700,000 tons of anode materials per year. And because of the sheer amount of manufacturing plants that's popping up in Europe, they need at least 500,000 tons of anode materials by 2029, just in Europe alone. Now, majority of the anode battery materials are supplied by Asia, but mostly in China. And because of the trade war and pandemic, a lot of battery manufacturers are now looking for ways to de-risk their supply chain by looking for suppliers outside of Asia. And as of recording this video, there are no established manufacturers in both Europe or North America. Now, given that's a simplified version of the backdrop, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison between Novonix and Tolga. In my opinion, there are three major components to this comparison, assuming the quality of materials meets the standard of battery manufacturers. You have gross margin, speed of delivery, and management team. Uh, don't worry, I'll explain each of these in detail in just a second. So let's start off with gross margins. 
please take this table with a grain of salt because these numbers are largely estimated based on company announcements, presentations, conversations with company personnel, and industry reports. For Novonix, remember they are selling synthetic graphite. And for Tolga, remember that they are selling natural graphite. For synthetic graphite, you're paying a little bit more because of performance attributes. And the production cost is significantly higher because you need a huge amount of energy to turn these raw materials into synthetic graphite. So the margin after cost is approximately 61% per ton. For Tolga, on the other hand, you're paying a little bit less because it's natural graphite. The production cost is significantly lower. Now, I am going to explain in just a second why it's significantly lower for Tolga, but their margins is approximately 82 to 83%. Now, one of the main reasons why Tolga has a significantly lower production cost compared to Novonix is because of location. Now, their Vitengi project, which is their largest graphite mine in northern Sweden, have the lowest energy cost compared to the rest of the world. And on top of that, the graphite flakes that's mined straight out of the ground are already naturally sized for anode materials. So they're losing significantly less materials during processing. Not only that, Tolga on the 5th of August announced that they found ways to yield upwards of 99%, up from previous 88%, which means that at this point, they're losing 1% during processing. And they've also discovered a 30% savings in energy consumption. Now, as much as I want to adjust the gross margins for Tolga, I'll keep it as is for consistency's sake. And it seems like Tolga has the advantage here of lower production costs, and that translated into almost a 21% difference in gross margins. Now, the important thing here is that the better the margins, the more a company will have to reinvest to both scale faster and attract investors. So this is a very important metric to keep an eye on moving forward into the future. Next, we have speed of delivery. And what I mean by speed of delivery is how fast can both companies get through the qualification process and start delivering 1,000 to 2,000 tons of materials per year. Why 1,000 tons? It's because at that point, if you're able to deliver consistently, customers are going to trust you and they're gonna order a lot more from you. Now, the speed to delivery is important for two main reasons. One, you want to accumulate learnings in production and transportation at scale as quickly as possible, because that way it will allow you to optimize your processes and minimize your errors. On top of that, the battery materials market just became a land grab opportunity because of the over-reliance on Chinese supply. Currently, it takes Tolga approximately 18 months to get through the qualification process, but it takes Novonix just a little bit less than 11 months to go through the process, including time for negotiation. Now, the upside to Novonix business is that they are already working with top tier battery manufacturers on testing services. And it also means that they know the exact specification the manufacturers want, along with all of the information they need to get through the process faster. Now, this doesn't mean that Tolga can't achieve the same time frame in shortening the qualification process, but it just means that Novonix has the advantage here to accumulate learnings faster and generate more social proof for future customers. On the land grab opportunity for battery materials, let me explain. We know for a fact that there is a global increase in demand for EVs and therefore a higher demand in battery cells. The problem is because of the pandemic and trade war, battery manufacturers realize that the supply chain is severely at risk since majority of the materials are sourced from China. So that really is a catalyst for battery manufacturers to find material suppliers that's outside of Asia to de-risk their supply chain. And like I said earlier in the video, there are no established manufacturers or supplier of battery materials in either Europe or North America. And that makes it a land grab opportunity since the company who can consistently deliver high quality materials at the right price is very likely going to win an overwhelming share within that continent. After all, the qualification process is so long. Why go through it all over again unless the battery materials is 10x better? I would love to know what you think about my observation there. Do you think there is an actual land grab opportunity here? Let's talk about it in the comment section below. Now the last component, which is the management team, is here to address execution risk as well as financing risk. There are a few things that jump out when you dig into the management team. Co-founder Dr. Chris Burns have deep ties with Tesla's research partner, Jeff Dorn, and one of their board members, Andrew Laveras, is the ex-CEO of Dow DuPont, who did research and development work for Ford and Samsung. 
On top of that, they have a US Admiral on the board. And together, Navonics has a strategic advantage to successfully execute in United States and Canada. And we're starting to witness that in their initial supply agreement with Samsung SDI and a non-binding memorandum of understanding with Sanyo. And on the back of their contracts, they have raised $63 million in 2020 to help scale their production and start fulfilling their Samsung SDI contract. So in terms of execution and financing, it really seems like they are on the right track to make magic happen here. If we take a look at their recent balance sheet, we can see that they have approximately 38 to $43 million worth of cash right after the race, which according to an interview with Hyperchange, Dr. Chris Barnes have mentioned that the funding round will last them approximately two years as they ramp up to a 2000 ton per annum facility. Personally speaking, I think the biggest risk for Novonix is neither in execution or financing, but the fact that their core value proposition is solely in Dr. Chris Burns and Dr. David Stevens, and both of them own very small stakes in the company. Nonetheless, in my opinion, it's just dangerous for the core value proposition of the company to own a tiny portion of the company. And frankly, you want them to own a bigger part so that they feel like they got skin in the game and leaving the company would materially impact their wealth. On the other hand, for Toga, because they operate a mine out of northern Sweden, their team comprised of both geologists and scientists in battery technologies with close affiliations with Cambridge University. Not to mention, Tolga is backed by one of the wealthiest women in Norway, and together with their technical team, this gives them a strategic advantage to capitalize on the huge amount of factories coming online in Europe. And we're starting to see glimpses of them executing successfully with their Mitsui agreement to join develop the Vitengi Anno project and the agreement to supply materials to Verasis Energy. On top of that, the Vatangi project stage one is approved by the Swedish government with 5,000 tons of anode material coming online at the end of 2022. And by 2023, the Vatangi project will be fully online at 19,000 tons of anode material. Now, all of this sounds awesome, but the capex required to see this project through is 27 million for the first stage and 147 million for the second stage. This is the most recent balance sheet that I can find on Tolga, which is dated 31st of December, 2019. And as you can see, Tolga will need significant financing from the Mitsui agreement to see this project through. And we don't really know the concrete details of the Mitsui agreement just yet, and it's also non-binding, but Tolga has everything they possibly need to make this happen. And they really just need to work through the challenge of financing and they'll be in place to capture the land grab opportunity for battery materials in Europe. Let me conclude. When it comes to gross margins, Tolga has an absolute advantage over Navonix because of their location. Being in Northern Sweden means that the cost of energy is incredibly low. And not to mention that their natural graphite flakes from their mine, straight out of their mine, are ready naturally sized for anode materials. So they're losing very little raw materials during processing. With the speed of delivery, Nivonics have the upper hand here because they are well capitalized and they are starting to fulfill their Samsung SDI contract, which really just builds learnings as well as social proof to land your next customer. When it comes to management team, both companies have the right talent and everything they need to win in their continent. But the minimal ownership from Dr. Chris Burns does worry me, and the financing risk from the Tolga side also worry me. So I'm going to pay close attention to both companies as their stories pan out. But if I were to ask you, Novonix or Tolga, which one would you choose? So thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. If you wanna support me to keep making great content for you, just gently smash that like button right there. And for more videos like these, make sure you subscribe to my channel, click onto the bell, so that when my future videos are ready, you be the first one to know. Until next time, my name is David. Otto will always do the honors and see you very, very soon.